You, you must be Vanika. My name is Lincoln Clay, motherfucker. Six years since gamers filled the overpriced shoes of Vito Scaletta and 2K Chex Mafia 2. Open world games have continued to evolve, with the Grand Theft Auto series maintaining itself as the pinnacle of the genre. With a new developer in US-based Hangar 13, and a focus on narrative instead of wacky antics like GTA or the upcoming Watch Dogs 2, Mafia 3 has to have something up its sleeve to ensure gamers remember it as one of the greats years from now, right? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. The backdrop for Mafia 3 is New Bordeaux, Louisiana in 1968, and this chill mofo Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. has just returned from his tour of duty in Vietnam. An orphan who was adopted by Sammy Robinson, the head of Delray Hollow's Black Mob, Lincoln inevitably rejoins the criminal underworld when his crew is betrayed by Sal Marcano, the leader of New Bordeaux's Italian Mafia. What proceeds from here is a scary black man's roaring rampage of revenge with the ultimate goal being the complete dismantling of Marcano's empire, piece by piece. Lincoln is aided by Father James, a priest who ran the orphanage where Lincoln resided prior to his adoption, John Donovan, a war buddy and member of the CIA, and three scumbags who were also wronged by Marcano. Thomas Burke is a drunkard who heads the Irish mob that has its hands in moonshine and stolen cars. Cassandra, if that is her real name, leads the Haitians, distributing weed and guns, and freaking Vito from Mafia 2 returns as your third partner, running the Union extortion racket. The entire story is told as a flashback, using documentary interviews with Father James and FBI agent John McGuire to move the plot. It's a very novel approach that gives you extra insight into the various characters, although a lot of what McGuire says about Lincoln himself comes from the perspective of someone that has never met him, making him a pretty unreliable narrator. You, of course, will see and guide Lincoln on his quest for revenge as you drive around New Bordeaux, shooting, stabbing, and beating various flavors of the human race, but mostly white racists. Nigger! The niggers. Niggers. The nigger. The nigger. Nigger. Goddamn nigger. The city is broken up into several districts, and Lincoln single-handedly takes them under control using the guerrilla warfare tactics he perfected in Nam. After receiving information from a local, you're tasked with hitting enough spots in the area to drastically reduce the revenue of an underboss's racket, after which they will reveal themselves, like an idiot, at a stronghold, you'll confront them in a bombastic showdown, and move on to the next district. Again. And again. And again. Oh. The entire game runs in this fashion, and it can get old if you're used to the variety of other games like Saints Row, or Ubisoft game number 42. A couple of the boss fights play out differently, but there isn't a single standout of the bunch, at least the combat is satisfying, with firearm controls that are snappy, especially with aim assist on high, an adequate cover system, hand-to-hand -hand combat that feels impactful, and some brutal takedowns. AI, on the other hand, is stupid, with no sense of self-preservation, and is only challenging due to the sheer numbers and the guaranteed presence of larger guys carrying shotguns that reduce your HP to nothing with one shot. Thankfully, you can even the odds with purchases from arms dealers provided by Cassandra or assistance from Vito's soldiers. Considering the lack of any kind of fast travel system, a car delivery from Burke's associate will help you greatly if you lose yours due to damage or an untimely death. These, and other tools at your disposal, are given after you disposition districts to your partners. If you don't dole out enough rackets to a lieutenant, they'll betray you, becoming your enemy. Initially, you're given the impression that the decisions on which parts of the city to give to whom are difficult, but keeping the entire crew together is really simple, and you'll figure out how after your first sit-down. Of course, who you keep affects what weapons and aids you can use, so you still might want to get rid of Cassandra if that screaming Zemi just is in your bag. There are times when the presentation of Mafia 3 is awe-inspiring, capturing the look and feel of the Civil Rights era American South from the perspective of those that had it the hardest. Non-whites tend to be confined to poor neighborhoods, can't enter certain restaurants without confrontation, and are constantly bombarded with insults. Looking good, chocolate pudding. 
As Lincoln, you are heavily scrutinized by law enforcement and are immediately attacked if crimes are committed, even if you didn't pull a gun. The three AM radio stations play varied genres, and a lot of popular songs of the era are included in the playlist. That's not saying anything about the outstanding original score that plays during other moments, which is reminiscent of how jazz and blues sounded during the era. The voice acting and facial animations are also top notch, with Alex Hernandez and Lance Compton being the standouts. Still, all of the character interactions are believable, from those of the main players to the bits you hear from the guys you off. Cause if he don't, we are fucked like yo mama on prom night. For sure man, for sure. Unfortunately, this care doesn't seem to extend to the graphics, with quality ranging from pretty great to pretty bad depending on your location and the time of day. The glitches, a subpar frame rate on consoles, and an initial 30 FPS lock on PC don't help matters either, though that last bit has been addressed. It's still a competent package, but most games don't allow you to fall through the geometry. Most games aren't either too dark or too bright. Most games don't... well, if we're talking about AAA or open world games nowadays, yeah they do. Mafia 3 is a game with an outstanding narrative pieced together with standard open world gameplay, minus the BS, with audio that's a joy to behold, graphics that make you wonder what year it is, and glitches that make you question whether the game should have been delayed a bit. Its narrative focused gameplay leads to repetition, and there are some omissions that are glaring despite justification by the setting. It's a game that feels like more time went into presenting a particular aesthetic and tell a story rather than be an awesome game, and that reduces the quality of the overall package. Because of this, you should wait for a sale, or maybe even dodge the game altogether to watch one of the movie compilations that has likely already been made, and I don't say that lightly, despite my channel's origins making gameplay videos without commentary. All that being said, I wonder what the next Mafia game setting would be in 2022. 1980s Los Angeles? A return to Empire Bay? Maybe a focus on the Yakuza- wait, uh, we already have a series like that. I got nothing.